Welcome to the Film Florida podcast. My name is John Lux, and I'm the executive director of Film Florida. Before I introduce you to our guest, I wanted to thank you for listening to this episode of the podcast. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and review the Film Florida podcast. The better our analytics are, the more likely others will find us. Also, we launched a Film Florida merchandise page. Visit teespring.com slash stores slash Film Florida to purchase Film Florida t-shirts, sweatshirts, and coffee mugs. Shona Tuckman is the CEO of Create Films. She wrote and produced her first feature, Finding Joy, a romantic comedy drama, which was released in theaters in June of 2013. After that, she produced Fat, a drama about a man battling food addictions. The film premiered at the 2013 Toronto International Film Festival. Her third film, War Story, starring Katherine Keener and Ben Kingsley, is a drama that premiered at the 2014 Sundance Film Festival. Great Films has a slate of projects on their plate right now, and we talked to Shona about them. Here's my conversation with Shona Tuckman. Thanks for spending time with us today, Shona. Thank you for having me, John. So let's start with your backstory. Where are you from? Well, I have a, kind of a strange story in terms of getting myself to the United States. I was born in Scotland, and when I was about six years old, I moved to England, my dad's job brought us down near London. And so my accent changed to being uh, sounding English, but I'm not actually English at all. If you've seen the film Braveheart, uh, you'll know that uh, there's still tension <laughs> between Scotland and England. And um, I, uh, depending where I am in the world, I will say I'm Scottish versus English. Um, so, uh, but yeah, I basically grew up in England and my dad was an architect and my mom Mostly worked from home, but she was also an illustrator. So our household was very creative. There were always blueprints on the kitchen table covered with paints and paper and and all sorts of crafts and and art. So I had a very sort of creative start in childhood in, in, you know, from the beginning. And when did you get interested in the film industry? Well, I actually would say that my dad took me to see the first film I ever saw and I'm aging myself now, but the first film I ever saw was Star Wars. Uh And my dad took me to see the film twice. And I think it was because he wanted to see it a second time, but he told me so that I could see it a second time. Um, But I was five years old. And I remember whatever the experience was of being in that cinema and, and feeling that feeling and that emotion, I was just kind of overwhelmed with. I Whatever that is, I want to do that. And I didn't know what that was because I was too young to understand it. But it was such an amazing feeling that I just took that. And from then on, honestly, that was the first time that I that I knew I loved films and I wanted to do something with that. And I didn't know what that was or how to go about it, but it just sort of built from there. And from age five to being a professional, how did you get your start in the industry? Um, well, I started off doing photography in school. Um, that was sort of the closest thing at the time that you know that you could sort of do that was media related. There were no iPhones, of course, there was no technology really that you could get your hands on easily back then. And so I started doing photography, and then eventually went to an art school in England um, to study photography. And then they also extended the program the second and third year of the degree was film and television production. It was very small art school, but so we had limited equipment, but uh, it was great. But they also then had an exchange program with uh, a university in Rochester, New York called RIT, which was a massive school with lots of funding and lots of equipment. So I was able to go there for a six month period to study there, which was a fantastic experience all around. And that's actually when I met Brad, my now husband. And so that's kind of why I ended up staying in the United States. I went back and forth for about three years, finished my degree, and then came back and worked in a couple of television stations in Rochester, New York. And then I ended up coming to Florida with my husband, who was also a photographer. And then we we stayed in Florida. Um, He started a photography studio and I started working in as a production assistant in Miami area, mostly, I think, doing production and sort of worked my way up through that sort of world in, in production assistant to production coordinator and then 
started doing a bit more producing of small uh, TV segments and, and things like that, infomercials, commercials, that kind of thing. And then basically kind of got to the point where I felt sort of a lack of creativity. I wanted to revisit my interest in writing. I had sort of written plays when I was in high school and things like that. And um, was feeling a little bit, quite honestly, a little bit bored with just doing production and not having any input in the creative. So I, uh, and also at the same time, we uh, had decided to start a family. And so we ended up adopting our baby girl from China um, when she was one years old. And I was home a lot and um, being a mom and feeling like I needed to reconnect with my interests. So I started writing. Um, I started writing the first film that I ended up producing, which is Finding Joy. I would walk my daughter to the Starbucks uh, on Broward and US1 in Fort Lauderdale, and I would uh, let her take a nap as long as she would possibly sleep. And I would write a page (laughs) or something if I could at the time, and then I would continue that every day, and I'd go back and and just keep building on on that script. gave me a focus outside of motherhood that was still within my my interests and in and my passion for films and I'll, eventually one day I had a full script and so that's how the first film came about it was a long few years to to get to that point um but uh once it was written I thought well now what <laughs> what do I do with it <laughs> um and my producing background kind of reared its head and said wait a minute you maybe you can produce this as well uh and i thought well that's probably impossible but why not let me try that so i just started with somebody i don't remember who somebody had done a budget for me and a schedule and then i sort of started to go out and look for money and and it all kind of started to roll and once it was going i just kept going So talk about Finding Joy. You filmed that in Florida, I believe. So talk a little bit about filming in Florida as well as what the film is about. Yeah, so um, the the entire film was actually shot um, in Broward County. I just happened to live in Broward, so that was very useful. But uh, we found some great locations and the crew was amazing. Uh, That was back in the day when there was the um, tax credit. I think it was 2012 or 2013. So that was helpful, uh, to be honest. The story is basically a sort of, I guess, a comedy drama um, about a, a struggling writer who's had a success writing a novel and then has tried to recreate the second one and is struggling, which was sort of something I had always feared would happen to me is, you know, write one script and then that's it. You only have one in you. So that's always been a kind of a, an underlying fear that I had. And then, of course, the sort of quirky family um I have a lot, a lot of the characters in the film are actually based on some real people, mostly my husband's side, obviously, the crazy <laughs> one. Um, but it just sort of developed into um, sort of a quirky comedy drama that uh, the casting director named Kerry Barden had uh, read it and really liked it. And he's cast a lot of big, big studio films and agreed to, to try and cast the film for me, which was huge because... Obviously, without some some recognizable faces, or hopefully some names uh, that people have, you know, that they know, uh, it's very hard to finance a film. Now, they're not big names, but they were great and perfect, I should say, for the roles, Lainey Gazan and uh, Barry Bostwick, um, as well as Josh Cook and, and Leanne Balaban. So we were, I was very lucky with, with my cast. And I, I hired a director who was actually Swiss. Uh, who lived in LA, but he was kind of back and forth from Switzerland. We had met at a film festival uh, in Beverly Hills one year and uh, and started a friendship. So he sort of pitched me um, to direct the film. I wasn't in the position at that point to want to direct. That we'll get to later, but that was at the time not something I was interested in doing. So I was on the producing team and was watching my first script come to life, and it was extremely exciting. Wow. And then after Finding Joy, you set out on Fat, which is a drama about a man battling food addictions. Talk about taking on such a topic and then taking that film to the 2013 Toronto International Film Festival. Right. Yes. Fat was the next film, quite a completely different type of film, obviously. 
It was a project that uh, at that point I was working with the Gersh agency um, out of LA and so they had brought me this project FAT and um, it is a, it's a based on basically based on the writer director's life. Everything uh, in the film happened to him and so it really spoke to me because it was so authentic and so real and, and um, heartbreaking. Um, I think that uh, more or less everyone I know has ha has somebody that they know who battles some sort of addiction. In my family, I have, have had that experience too. And so I think that it spoke to me on so many levels. It was so relatable, but also really hard to watch at times. And so I just, you know, I decided to take it on. It was a very small budget. We only had $50,000 to make the whole film. Wow. Most of that went into post-production because once we were accepted into the Toronto Film Festival. We had to then clean up some sound and change some of the music because some of the rights were not available and things like that that we hadn't expected to do. So it was a little bit, little bit more money needed to be raised. But again, it was a very small budget, and everybody kind of, you know, put their uh, all their help in as much as they could in Boston, which is where we filmed, which is where the director is from. And then when we, we screened at um, Toronto, we were picked up by a Canadian distributor for worldwide distribution. Um, so it's been out there. It's been out. I don't know where it's at right now, to be honest. I know that you could you could watch it on iTunes and it was all on all sorts of different platforms, um, which is always kind of changing depending on the distribution agreements that are out there. But uh, I'm very proud of it. It's a really raw film. And... Um, it's a completely different film than Finding Joy. So I felt good about being a part of it. And then your next film is War Story, starring Ben Kingsley. And it's a drama that gets into the 2014 Sundance Film Festival. So talk about the process of making that film and then going to Sundance. Yeah, so um, War Story was a project, again, that was brought to me by my agency um, through Catherine Keener. So Catherine Keener also was represented at um, Gersh. And Catherine, um, I don't know, most people don't know this, but she's actually born in Hialeah. So she's actually a Miami native. Um, oh, wow. And also, actually, uh, Mel, who was the star of Fat, he was born in Miami also. So it's funny. I don't know. Maybe I'm just sort of meant to work with people from Miami. But, yeah, so Catherine had found this. Uh, the script, the director, Mark Jackson, had previously won an Independent Spirit Award for a film called Without, and this was his next film. And she came to me with this project to say, you know, I really love this. I want to be involved. I want to star in it, but I also want to be involved as a producer. Would you take the lead on the producing? And I said, yeah, let me take a look. Um, and so the script needed some work, and so... Uh, I brought in a co-producer named Kristen Gore, who is actually Al Gore's daughter, and she did a sort of pass on the script, and then she and I ended up putting the film together. We were looking for the lead male uh, character, and we were throwing ideas around, and Catherine said, well, what about Ben Kingsley? And I said, not on this budget. Um, we had 500000 to make the whole film, and we shot the whole film in Sicily half Italian crew, half American crew. And I, I said, well, he's not going to work for scale. And she said, well, why not? Let's try. So she phoned him up and said, hey, we met once on the stairs. Uh, you were going up and I was coming down. I think it was on the Tonight Show or something. And I'm doing this film in Sicily. Would you be interested in reading the script? We'll fly you out for five days and you can shoot, we shoot you out and then you can go home. And he said, sure, why not? Wow. So, so we said, okay, great. <laughs> Thank you. And um, and he came and he was amazing. He's pretty intense, but um, a great actor. And we, uh, we were very happy to have him. So once the film was completed, we submitted to Sundance and um, were accepted there. So it was, that was very exciting to premiere there. And then um, ISC Films picked up the film at the festival. So they released it. So that was, yeah, that was kind of exciting. So your first three films were done in a relatively short period of time, you know, all things considered, between 2012 and 2014, and you end up in two of the best film festivals in North America, or maybe even the world. What do you attribute your quick success to? Um, it's funny. When you put it like that, it sort of feels like, wow, how did I breathe for those few years? But 
there's no such thing as overnight success. I think that, you know, it's all the years leading up to it. It's all of that sort of building of connections and all the building blocks that go into your developing of your skills, the craft, trying to also get involved in the right projects, the one that you are passionate about um, so that you're not wasting time and saying, why did I do that? Why did I spend a whole year on that thing? Well, that was a waste. Um, I do think it comes from that five-year-old who went to see Star Wars and every moment from then has been building towards how do I get to where I want to be? I'm not holding an Oscar statue yet. Um, so that's the goal, you know, uh, how do you get there? And if, if you get there, you get there. If you don't, you don't. But it, it's about, I don't want to say not giving up, but that's part of it. It's about just continuing to build it's like baby steps, you know, tiny steps towards the next thing and always learning and always um, trying to meet more people and going to as many festivals as possible and as many seminars as possible and just honing in on what you love to do and kind of just doing it and not really having that, oh, well, it won't work. Or, you know, like I say, with Ben Kingsley, I would have, I said, well, there's no way he'll do it. Well, now I don't say that. I say, well, why not? Let's try. They can only say no. You know, that's the sort of attitude now. It's like, why not? <laughs> I don't know. Does that make sense? <laughs> it makes total sense. Absolutely. And the biggest challenge that producers have is funding their projects. And we get that question, you know, multiple times a week. How can I fund my project? How have you managed to tackle that part of the process? Oh, well, <laughs> it's my least favorite Um I don't think anyone says it's their favorite part. It's really a challenge. It's huge. It's a huge challenge. And every single film becomes a reinvention of the wheel. You just start over, more or less. And each one is different. It all depends on what the film is. And I think, for me, my first stop is my agent, Gersh. He will, he will introduce me to people who are maybe looking for this particular type of project. Uh, equity investors, uh, particularly, but that doesn't always doesn't always work that way. You have to sort of go out yourself and say, well, how am I going to piece this together? And honestly, each film has been a completely different experience for me. Some have been good and some have not been good. I had financiers fall out at the last minute three times on the last film that I just did, uh, and some fell out while I was in production, uh, and I had to scramble to find a piece to to finish the film it's always a challenge i don't have an easy answer i wish i did because then i'd use it myself (laughs) right (laughs) Um, it's not it's not good it's not easy but again i think it also depends on the project and if you have an actor that's interested in playing a part for example then you can take a package and you can say okay well i have this person playing this role are you interested in financing it like katherine keener for example she was attached to War Story. We went out looking for, for financing. When once we attached Ben Kingsley, it all came together. So it's kind of piecing it together in, in very creative ways. And something you've mentioned a couple of times in here, how important is it to have that agent for you? Well, uh, it's definitely been very helpful to to have a person to sort of, I guess, like a sounding board, if nothing else, to say, hey, I found this script. What do you think? They know the inside. They know what's happening day by day in the marketplace. Who's buying what? Who's not buying at all? Which kind of is what's happening at the moment. Uh, a couple of years ago, everybody was selling to Netflix. Now Netflix isn't buying anything because they're they're developing from within. It's changing constantly. And I think for me, having someone on the inside that can keep me posted on that so I don't waste my time going down one rabbit hole that's never going to lead anywhere has been helpful. Um, But you have to get to the point where an agent will even consider talking to you. So I think for me, it was, you know, making Finding Joy and just kind of slogging through that and then having that released. uh, Warner Brothers released that in 15 theaters and then went to, um, on, I forget what it was then, on demand, some sort of special on demand thing. I don't know. I can't remember the, the, the terminology now. It's changed since then. But I had then had a credit under my belt, as it were, to then say, okay, who do I know that knows an agent? And then I was introduced to this uh, agent through somebody I knew. And um, it just sort of went from there. It's all about, again, like sort of who you know in a way, but you have to prove yourself before you can open that door. 
And from 2018 to now, you have, if I read correctly, at least four films in various forms of progress. If you can, talk about what you have going on right now. Last year, I was shooting a, a film that was an adaptation of a, a YA novel. Um, I had optioned uh, the novel about four years ago, and it's called Dr. Bird's Advice for Sad Poets. Uh, it's a it's a sort of coming of age drama with comedy about a boy who is suffering from anxiety and depression. It's a very sort of stylized film. I well, I went a strange route with that one, to be honest. I, I ended up shooting a short film version of the of the feature in order to raise the financing because people loved the feature script, but they couldn't visualize it because it's it is sort of in, unique in its style. Um, and there's a sort of Wes Anderson-esque in its style. So I ended up putting together a short film that I shot here in, in South Florida over five days uh, and put that together and then was able to present to potential financiers, you know, this is what the film will be like and this is the director's vision. And that helped. That's what helped me to raise the financing for that one. We just finished post-production. Uh, what date? What month is it now? Uh, well, <laughs> it, we just finished post-production, um, and uh, we have a distributor now. I'm finalizing an agreement with them to distribute early in uh, 2020. So that was a almost five-year-long process to get that film done, overlapping obviously with other projects. I also went back to writing myself because I work with a lot of writers and I was kind of not having time myself to write. And I, so I took a little bit of time to myself and started to write a script called Maggie. That's a very sort of personal story to me. Um, and I'm planning to be directing that film. I had Tony Collette attached for about four months. And then unfortunately she had to pull out. I now have Jennifer Aniston's team are supporting it and hopefully she will she's going to be reading it actually in the next few weeks um if she responds her team is fully supportive so that would be great uh if she responds well then and attaches to it then i can go out with that and raise the money hopefully uh she should get the film made in the meantime sort of preparing myself to direct for the first time which is something i never thought i would be interested in doing but but the journey has led me here and i'm very excited and feel ready to do that with my my next script well it sounds like a natural evolution of where you've gone from and where you're going i think so it's funny because i didn't expect it and like you said it sort of naturally feels right now but i think it's from all the experience that i have garnered from being on set and sort of hand-holding <laughs> directors um through their process and post-production and editing and everything, I, I do feel like it's now the right time and I, it's the right project. It's the right script for me because um, I know it intimately um, because I wrote it and it came from you know my heart. And so I, I feel confident that I'm ready to do that and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I just need to finalize the, the actress that's playing the lead. Um, but so far, everyone who has Reddit has really liked it. I just uh, haven't managed to close the deal in terms of of scheduling um, yet. So hopefully soon. (laughs) Shona, when you're approached by people wanting to get into the industry, what do you say? What advice do you give them? Um, I would say if they have a specific interest, let's say if somebody's interested in screenwriting, obviously I'd say take as many classes as you can. There's many, many options online right now um, that you can take. UCLA online school has some phenomenal courses. Going to local film festivals, you don't even have to travel. I mean, we have Fort Lauderdale Film Festival. We have the Miami Film Festival. There's plenty of other festivals in Florida that people can go to and see films and go to events and meet people and just, you know, start to make connections, learn everything, you know, again, it depends on what you're interested in. But if you're not sure, then you have to learn everything. You just go to movies, read scripts. There are all, lots of them are available online. I think it just, you know, just immerse yourself in any possible way that you can be involved. There are film, you know, film schools that are maybe looking for crew to help with student films actors the same thing you know just be a part of anything you can be a part of 
and don't wait for something to come to you because especially in Florida, we have a smaller film community. It's not like it's New York and LA and Atlanta where there's just constant production around you. You have to seek it out, but there are ways to do that here. And I think that, like I said, it depends on what your interests are, but just don't sit back. It's not going to come to you. You know, you have to go out there and just, just meet people and, and learn. And if people want to read more about you and create films, where can they go? Well, I, I do have a website, createfilms.com, create is with a K. And um, you can sort of see what we've done so far and I read a little bit about the upcoming projects. And also I can be found on IMDb. Thanks for taking the time with us today, Shona. I really appreciate you sharing all your insights. Oh, thank you. Um, thanks for having me. And thanks for listening to this episode of the Film Florida podcast. For more information about Film Florida, go to filmflorida.org or visit our social media pages on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out the Film Florida merchandise at teespring.com slash stores slash Film Florida. And please remember to subscribe, rate, and review the podcast.